Hey guys, welcome to Dad Devotionals on this Good Friday 2020. Before we get into today's reading, I just want to share, share a story about watching virtual services. I don't know, maybe you have a funny one, especially if you, if you have little kids like I do. Uh, my wife and I were watching in our bedroom, I believe it was Wednesday night, and the goal obviously was to have the kids join us in bed and watch the service, just kind of calm down and, and get ready for bedtime. Uh, because they they start around six o'clock and they end around seven, and we want them to just wind down and just start uh, easing into sleepy time. Well, they're my kids, so naturally, instead of doing that, they were banging and roughhousing, and and uh, and they were doing it really hard and loud, and just you know, I mean, it was, I mean, it was loud. <laughs> we had to keep turning up the volume, but it was so bad that a woman walking by with her husband actually knocked on our door. I don't know, around 7 p.m. or so, she wanted to check on us because she heard the banging and all from the street and wanted to make sure that we weren't, quote, tied up or something. Yeah, I I was both amused and embarrassed at the same time, and I just said, "Uh, yeah, it's bedtime, and this is kind of what happens. You know, this is just part of the deal. Hopefully, your at-home church experience was better than ours and less embarrassing and more focused on the actual service, but... I digress. Now let's get to today's gospel. See, I just transitioned there. Well, it's a composite gospel of the gospels of Matthew, Luke, and John. And uh, it's uh, it's a little bit of a long one, so just bear with me. When morning came, all the chief priests and elders of the people plotted against Jesus to put him to death. And when they bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that he had been condemned, was remorseful and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. And they said, what is that to us? You see to it. Then he threw down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. But the chief priests took the pieces of silver and said, it is not lawful to put them in the, into the treasury because they are the price of blood. And they consulted together and brought with them the potter's field to bury strangers, to bury strangers in. Therefore, that field has, has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the value of him who was priced, whom they of the children of Israel priced, and gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord directed me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, saying, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said to him, It is as you say. And while he was being accused by the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they testify against you? But he answered him not a word, so that the governor marveled greatly. Now at the feast, the governor was accustomed to releasing to the multitude one prisoner whom they wished. And at that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. Therefore, when they had gathered together, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ? For he knew that they had handed him over because of envy. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent to him, saying, Have nothing to do with that just man. For I have suffered many things today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitudes that they should ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor answered and said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, What then shall I do with Jesus, who is called Christ? They all said to him, Let him be crucified. Then the governor said, Why? What evil has he done? But they cried out all the more, saying, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he could not prevail at all, but rather that a tumult was rising, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. You see to it. And all the people answered and said, His blood be on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. And when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole garrison around him, 
and they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. When they had twisted a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and a reed in his right hand, and they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. Then they spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they took the robe off him, put, on, put his own clothes on him, and led him away to be crucified. Now as they came, they found a man of Serene, Simon by name. Him they compelled to bear his cross. And when they had come to a place called Golgotha, that is to say, place of a skull, they gave him sour wine mingled with gall to drink. But when he had tasted it, he would not drink. Then they crucified him and divided his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. Sitting down, they kept watch over him there, and they put up over his head the accusation written against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and another on the left. Then one of the criminals who were hanged blasphemed him, saying, If you are the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Do you not even fear God, seeing you are under the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. And those who passed by blasphemed him, wagging their heads and saying, You destroyed the temple and built it in three days? Save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests also mocking with the scribes and elders, said, He saved others, himself he cannot save. If he is the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now, if he will have him. For he said, I am the son of God. Even the robbers who were crucified with him reviled him with the same thing. Now for the, from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness over all the land. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of those who stood there when they heard that said, this man is calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine and put it on a reed and offered it to him to drink. The rest said, let him alone. Let us see if Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And the earth quaked, and the rocks were split, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. So when the centurion and those with him, who were guarding Jesus, saw the earthquake and the things that had happened, they feared greatly, saying, Truly, this was the Son of God. Therefore, because it was the preparation day, that the body should not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate, that their legs might be broken, and that they might be taken away. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first, and of the other who was crucified with him. But when they came to, came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and immediately blood and water came out. And he who has seen has testified, and his testimony is true, and he knows that he is telling the truth, so that you may believe. For these things were done that the scripture should be fulfilled, not one of his bones shall be broken. And again, another scripture says, they shall look on him whom they pierced. And many women who followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him, were there looking on from afar, among whom were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and, and, and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's sons. Now when evening came, had come, there came, to a, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who himself had also become a disciple of Jesus. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate commanded the body to be given to him. When Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his new tomb, which he had honed out of the rock. And he rolled a large stone against the door of the tomb and departed. And Mary Magdalene was there, and the other Mary, sitting opposite the tomb. Hmm. Amen. You know, I'm, I was reminded just reading that, that, <clears throat> you know, everyone, 
lambasting Jesus and just rallying against him. And yes, we're believers in the Orthodox faith, but in our own way, I just feel compelled to share that we do the same thing, you know, in not living up to the commandments in, you know, focusing more on the world than on Jesus. We crucify him every day in some way. Uh, just felt compelled to share that and wanted to do that right there. Uh, and I say this as somebody that does it myself for, I am chief among sinners as well. I actually also want to share with you or just discuss really quick this article that I found from the Washington Post. I was just looking for things to share about Good Friday. And this was one of the things that stood out. It's an article titled, Lockdown Weighs Heavily on Orthodox Christians During Easter. And, you know, it, it always seems to be the, I don't want to say simple people, but the common people that always have the, a great um, way of putting some very basic and fundamental biblical truths. And this was from a guy in Greece who runs a meat market, you know, a, a, you know, a guy running a small business who's probably affected by the, sh by the shutdowns like uh, many business owners are. And he says this, each person has the church inside of them. So uh, amongst, I mean, especially in Greece, where I believe it said in the article, 90% of the people are baptized into the Orthodox faith there. Each person has the church inside of them. And, you know, that really conveys and expresses and makes very real for us what Dr. Mamalakis said in episode 22 and Father Ted um, conveyed in episode 23. And that's the inner peace and the inner stillness that we need to have, especially at a time like this when we can't be in church for the services and, and with each other. And, you know, they also expressed uh, in the article you know, just the very simple act of, you know, uh, uh, kissing each other, greeting each other and hugging each other, shaking each other's hands. Those simple acts can't be done. They're done virtually over Zoom. Um, but we all have the church inside of us. You know, and as dads, as I believe as Father Ted said this, you know, we're the priests of our home church. And we need to understand this and reflect that to our kids. So I'll make sure to link that article up in the show notes. It, it's, it's something we should all uh, read and reflect on, especially at, le at least skim and just see what some of the people said. But that one really stood out, out to me. Each person is the church inside of them. Please remember that. I want to share our Lenten pr prayer and reflection. It's the prayer of St. Ephraim. O Lord and Master of my life, take from me the spirit of sloth, despair, lust of power, and idle talk but give rather the spirit of chastity, humility, patience, and love to thy servant. Yea, O Lord and King, grant me to see my own transgressions and not to judge my brother. For blessed art thou unto ages of ages. Amen. You know, in talking with Dr. Mamalakis in episode 22, we talked about instilling those virtues, you know, and they're right there in this prayer, chastity, humility, patience, and love. Consider those and consider focusing on, on that as a dad, you know, how you can instill in, and really model and make it make those virtues your own so that your your kids have have something to um to to see you know to modeled in real actual human behavior just think about that uh and one one final thing one final piece of of wisdom uh from the from the fathers i, I love their instagram account it's at wisdom of the fathers on instagram and it's a quote from saint philaret of chernigov and to me, this is really powerful. It's actually, uh, it's actually a reflection on Jesus's interaction with Judas. The Lord did not avert his face from Judas, from Judas and accepted the kiss of the traitor. Oh, how disgraceful that kiss was. What righteous one among men would not have uttered a bitter word upon hearing Judas's greeting? What holy man could have calmly accepted the kiss of a betrayer? But thou, O heavenly meekness, this calmly, and even with sorrowful love, say to that betrayer, Friend, wherefore art thou come? Betrayest thou the Son of Man with a kiss? How powerfully this heavenly meekness says to us, Learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. This is how one must bear offenses inflicted by people 
dear to our soul, by our friends, by our relatives, by people for whom we have done much good. Calling his unfortunate disciple his friend, the Lord showed him that divine love was ready to receive him even then, expressing astonishment rather than an indignation at Judas's appearance among his enemies and at his kiss of betrayal. Christ displayed the sorrow of love for his unfortunate disciple, sorrow that Judas had so painfully offended his own conscience. With a breath of love, he desired to soften and heal the wound of his soul. Behold, a love which, not thinking of its own danger, in concern, is concerned for the state of its enemy. And again, that's from St. Philaret of Chernigov. Concerned for the state of his, of his enemy, that, that love. Um, you know, I think our, our enemy right now is, is invisible, our coronavirus. But um, something that, and this is going to come out on, <clears throat> on Monday, but something that, that Father Barnabas shared in his, uh, in his interview with me, you know, it's that the devil, um, you know, was trying, <laughs> the devil in, in, in this, with the social distancing and everything was trying to get us out of church and, and, and keep us from Holy Week and keep us from celebrating Pascha. But what he did in, in effect was create uh, individual churches in all of our homes. Some of us maybe didn't have the perfect home church like we should as Orthodox, you know, there's 300 million Orthodox according to that, uh, that um, Washington Post article. So we may not have not all had the perfect icon corner and the perfect church, but now we're forced to. And we're forced to partake in the services in a different way and we have to really be intentional about it. And uh, so, you know, we're, we're focused on, the, on, on spreading that joy and that love and realizing that we're in this together. Um, so I just wanted to express that with you as well. I hope you have a blessed holy weekend, we could say, um, a blessed good Friday, blessed holy Saturday, and of course, a blessed and a joyous Pascha. And be on the lookout for the Paschal Sermon of St. John Chrysostom. I recorded a special episode of uh, Father Ted Pochini reciting that. So that's, that's something you're not going to want to miss. That's going to drop at 9 p.m. on Saturday night. So that's going to be the April 18th. So make sure to check that out. That's, that's it's really special. God bless you. God bless your family. And I'll see you here again on Monday.